Hello everybody, it's Claire here from Sewing by Claire and today I've got a clothing alteration for you that might come in handy. Um, I actually want to shorten the sleeves on my denim jacket. Now this jacket I've had for a very long time. It's one of those ones that keeps going in the um, charity bag and then coming back out again. And then I think two years ago I decided I was going to start and do some work on it. So I've started embellishing it with a little bit of beadwork, a little bit of embroidery as well, just to to um, brighten top of it and then I started on the back yoke as well through there and I've also done a little bit of embroidery just on the back here just from an embroidery book that had some templates that I could use but I did want I used it the day because we went back to the UK to go and visit my granddaughter Clementine and also my stepson James and um, other family members and I um, popped it on but if I just pop it on now and show you the sleeves are actually too long on it for me. So I've had them turned up for a while and wearing it like that, but in actual fact, the sleeves are still that touch too long, even with them being turned up. So being as I helped my student Alexis the other day shorten the sleeves on her jacket, I decided, well, why am I holding back on mine? So I thought I'd bring you along with me today to have a look and we will um, make this alteration together. And then if you ever need to do it for anybody, you'll know how to do it. So the first thing that we need to do is to establish how much we need to take off. So if we actually fold the sleeve back down again, and if I stand up, I can see that this is way too long for me. And I want the finished edge probably to be around about here. So let's just put a pin there very carefully so I don't stab myself. Whilst we just decide if that's, so it's probably needs to be a little bit longer just because when I bend my arm, the fabric does go up a bit and that would go up to there. So I think that's probably where I want it to be. Just keep trying it on, just fold it back, just keep trying it, perhaps a little bit longer, until you establish where you actually want the edge of your cuff to go. I think there is a proper sort of um, analysis and it, it, there's a bump on your thumb just here. And I think your sleeve is supposed to be in line with that so that it doesn't look too short. So I actually finally settled on this, this distance here. Now, this is the distance here. You might be forgiven for thinking that I only want to take it up about an inch, which would be that distance there. But actually I don't. I want the edge of my cuff here to finish at this point. So if I measure all the way along there, that's two and a half inches that I want to take off there. So what I'm going to do is I am going to remove this cuff here and then I'm going to take two and a half inches off here because my seam allowances are all hidden inside here. So that then will give me the right length for the um, for the alteration that I want to make. So just to make sure that's clear, I've got my cuff still on and I've got my point to which I want my new cuff edge here to be in line with this. So if I put that on, that's two and a half inches. So I'm going to take off um, my cuff here and then from the edge of the seam allowance there, I'm going to measure in two and a half inches. So in actual fact, the end of my cut line will have the seam allowance taken account of in there. Hopefully that more made sense to you and it should do as you go through. I am going to lose some of this um, event here but to my mind I'm not too fussed about that because I, I you know that's just to fin facilitate me getting my a hand on and if I need to put a little tuck in the back of the um, cuff to make it fit then I will do so that's what I'm going to do now so I know so now I can take my pin out because I know I want to do two and a half inches so if you're doing the same alteration make sure you make a note of that somewhere so you don't forget because you can, if you have a break or if you need it elsewhere for anything, then it's very easy to forget. So we'll write that down and then we'll know where we are. So off to get the unpicker because we're going to unpick this row of orange stitching down here and take this cuff off. So in order to get started, just have a look where your stitches are. Take your quick unpick with a little um, thing or your seam rip, whatever you call it, depending on where you are in the country. Put it underneath that stitch, but just make sure you've just got only one stitch. And then you can just push on your seam ripper and that will start you off. And then you can then work your way along just to make a little gap. Pull on your stitches if you need to, just to pull it through. And just try not to snag the rest of the fabric, it should start to come through. And once it starts, you'll be able to then pull inside here 
and see where your stitches are and then you can then just quite easily go through these stitches here one at a time. It does feel like it's a good thing to do while you're watching TV if you're careful. Maybe morning coffee on the terrace or the porch depending on where you live. And as I say you can just and what we can see is that we've got the difference here between the two um, fabrics and that's actually our seam allowance there so we can pay attention to that so that's where the seat that's where the um, original cuff is sewn on and we can see how much then we've got the distance between the two is, is, is our seam allowance and we need the seam allowance because we're going we don't want to cut that bit off because we need that for when we for tucking back into the cuff again for making our jacket and that putting our cuff back on again and making it the right length otherwise we'll make it too short if you're not sure cut off less and then just tack it in place by hand because you can always add on um sorry you, you can't add on you can always take off more but you can't add any more on so let's just continue this through it's great for vintage garments as well this is if you've got a a vintage jacket that you want to adjust and wear. Just be careful you don't go too far through and cut a hole in your in your fabric. But again, we can just cut through those stitches and take this cuff off. The other thing that I would suggest you do is put a pin on the side of your sleeve, the side of your cuff that has the button, because we're not taking the button off so if we put that in there like that, so the button's going to go on the underside of the placket because that's going to go over the top with the buttonhole and we want it to be the same way round, otherwise it's going to feel odd whenever we wear it. So I've just put a, a button, a, a um, pin in there and that will just help identify that for me. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this. I do one at a time so I don't get the cuffs mixed up. Obviously you can choose to do one um both at the same time if you want to but i would really recommend that you consider labeling up your pattern piece that you know your cuffs so you know which is the left cuff and which is your right cuff as i say just go into the corners here just take your time because some stitching gets very tight where they've started and stopped with what they were doing and on this one we've got a couple of stitches going down as well which i need to take out that button's just going to get a little bit in the way but don't worry too much about that because it's not going to pull off so because that button is riveted on if you find that your rivet's gone through your cuff at all then you can always just um, snip that little corner of fabric off off the inside so as you can see it doesn't take long to take that off see the difference between the jacket can't we when it's been washed and worn and distressed in the manufacturing process and the colour it started off so again just watch your fingers just be careful going down into these corners because you're dealing with several different layers of fabric just use all your skills of patience And there we go. So we've got our cuff off now. So now we can now put our um, quick and pick underneath. We just want to take out this old orange thread. We don't want to use that anymore. And it's going to get in the way. If we don't take it out now, we end up having to try and pick it out of the stitches later. And believe me, I know which is easier to do. Having tried both ways. So just a little trick, when you get your loose ends like this and they're too short to do much with, I mean that one's a little bit longer so that's not so bad. What I do is go to the inside of your garment and locate where those stitches are together. Put your um, quick unpick underneath. Now rather than using the blade side, use the blank side and just pull those threads through to the right side for you. So there's that one. That one's not pulled through, has it? 
because what that will do is it will oh we can thread it through with a needle is that it just pulls that thread through so it's got a little bit of a a, a long one to go by so if I get a needle on this blue thread because that's slightly longer you can start it off by going through your fabric already through into the middle watch your fingers and if you just take this thread here just about the end slightly we can thread it through the needle and pull it through and then we can knot off those two fabric those two threads together and it'll stop it from unraveling so there we are we've got the yellow one there and the blue one there so if I hold on to the yellow one which is the shorter one and then make a circle around it there's the yellow one there's a the blue one going over the top you can then use your needle to then hook that underneath and tie a knot and then if you do the same again and hook it underneath just watch and you can always use the point of your quick unpick because I am stabbing myself with my needle and pull it through and then pull it tight. What that means is, although you've got not got enough thread there to tie it off in terms of sewing stitches, it'll just make sure that that doesn't now fray any further past where you were. So let's see if we can do the same on this one here. So we've got a little needle, a thread there. Go through on the inside and try and locate where those are. There. No, that one's not going to work for me. So I've only got the one. So with this one, what I'll do is I'll thread the needle through into the inside, being careful to preserve my fingers. Just wet the edge of that thread just so that it keeps the fibres together. And then if you've got the needle of your just poking through. You can just take the edge of this. You can use a needle threader if you want to, if you've got one. I've got quite a big end on my eye on my needle just to try and help. But then I'm just going to thread that through the eye of the needle. Through. So pull that through so that's tight. And then just push it through on there and then that'll just carry that that thread through so again it'll just secure it down for you okay so a little tip and then what we're going to do now is let me just get rid of these threads so what i'm going to do now is from the edge of the seam allowance not from the edge of the um where the you could see i'm going to now use my frixion pen which is heat erasable and go to the edge of my seam allowance and now mark a line and that's actually going to be my cutting line. So you're going to have to be brave. If you're unsure at all, just tack it. Just offer your cuff. Oh, I'll show you how to do that in a second. Let me just finish doing this. So just so that just put this on. So I'm measuring two and a half inches from the cut from the existing cut edge which is where in that was set inside my my cuff and I think it's always ways of working out how you can double check what you're going to do to make sure that it's right and what you can do then is if you offer that up you've got and you know roughly what the seam allowance is from there so offer that up to your jacket and just reattach it so you're just measuring up the edge of your seam allowance with that dotted line that you've just draw, drawn or dash line should I say and this is where you'll see that it's slightly going to be slightly wider because your cuff goes out like that to accommodate the forearm so it go, goes out from the wrist to accommodate your forearm so as we can see here the cuff's going to be slightly too big to fit on but don't worry, we're expecting that. So I'm just going to put that on there like that for now. And then what you can do is just tuck that back up inside and try it on. Now I'm going to just move that out of the way because I know the button goes on the side that's underneath. So let me just try this jacket on and see where we are with it. 
Okay, so here's the jacket on. I think that's about right for me. That's just going just to where that, that dot is pretty much. I mean, there's a little bit of play in it, but then when I bend my arm, it's not shooting right the way at my arm. This is how it was before, look. Right down to my fingers. And that's the difference that we're making to, to this one. So now I know I can go ahead and cut that and sew this cuff back on again with confidence. And that will be a much, much nicer finish and a much nicer look than this one. So that's what I'm just going to try and do now. So now we can remove this cuff because we know that we're, we're on the right track and that we're happy with it. Make sure your lines are still there and I can just see the lines that I've drawn. So a pair of scissors, excuse me if I made the camera wobble. And I'm just now going to snip straight across, about joining those dashed lines up together. Try and make it smooth if you can do, or as smooth as you can. It's always worth putting a, a, a mark at the start and the stop so you know where you are. There we go. And that is the piece that we've taken off. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we know the button was on the um, inside piece here. We are just going to, I hope in actual fact, what I think I will do, the seam allowance on this was about half an inch, just under half an inch. So I'm going to just mark a line at half an inch, and that will tell me that I'm being consistent with my seam allowance. So just do that all the way around. Just give you something to measure up against. Oh, bless you if you heard that, that was my husband sneezing. Okay. So then what we're going to do now is take our button. Remember that the button needs to be on the outside and we're going to push that onto here now. We're gonna push it up to that mark that we've just made. Oh, it's getting twisted. See what I mean about not having much of a vent left? So I'm going to match the edge of the cuff up with that half an inch there. I'm going to do it smooth just here. I'm going to pin that at right angles actually, that'll be easier. And then, if you're making a jacket, the, and then I'm going to put this bit here onto this, onto this section just there. That's right. So that's going to tuck right up to there and then the edges here are going to match up on to the edges there. I'm going to put a pin in just to hold it steady for now. Working with quite thick fabric on these so just, just bear that in mind when you're doing your pinning. And what I'm going to do is because the, if you're doing a jacket anything, any pleats or anything go on the back half of the jacket I'm going to put any gathers into this section of my fabric away from the button. So I'm going to pin here all the way around. Pin that onto there. Making sure that it, oh, I see I've got a little bit of a gather in the back of the, when I've pinned it, look. So make sure it's nice and smooth. And then we're going to have an excess of fabric here where the cuff is too small for this. Now that we know that, that's because of the angle of the um, sleeve. We could, if we wanted to, go in and just make the seam allowance slightly thicker there. And that would actually take account and angle it up towards the sleeve. These sleeves are fairly narrow anyway, so I'm just going to put a little pleat in, I think. 
So I think if we measure away from the edge of this one, yep, so about an inch in, and then I'm just going to twist it to make sh so that, that lies flat, but then that takes in any excess there. Can split this if as well if you wanted to between one or two pleats, depending on how you like to see your sleeves lie flat. Just put that pin in there. Careful, watch your fingers because it's stiff fabrics. And then with a little bit of persuasion, you should be able to get your jacket cuff to be smooth most places and then as I say just with that little pleat just to take account of the excess fabric and what I'm going to do is pin this and then try it on again and see if I like how it looks so that's just come out there so I'm just pulling that back in again so if I don't know, like how it looks now I can change it before I actually sew it in place because that's always much easier to rectify than if you um, wait until afterwards and have to unpick it again So hopefully you can see there that when that's pinned, that's sewn on top, the button will still work and still do up. The cuff's all nice and even all the way around. And then we can just open that up just to sew it together. And we've got the little pleats. Let me just go and try that on, make sure I'm happy with it, and then I'll come back to you. Okay, so I've just loaded my machine up with this colour thread here, which is like a rust colour. I've matched it up to the buttonhole as much as I can do. And although it's a little bit more vibrant because the other one's a little bit faded, I don't think you're going to notice it enough in order for it to be a problem. So a mustard is a really good colour because that looks quite orange, but it's actually, um, if when you actually put it on, that little bit of brown tone just tends to um, lighten it up a little bit so that it's not too obvious. The other thing that I want to do is change my needle. And I've got, because we're sewing denim, I've got a jeans needle here, and that will then actually make it much easier to sew with um, in my machine. So let's just sew our ne machine. And if it's been a while since you've changed your needle, then remember needles are dis classed as disposable items. So you don't have to change them every single project, as some people might tell you you need to, depend on what you're doing. But you do have to change them fairly regularly to keep them sharp and also if you notice any slip stitches that kind of thing that can all be because your needle isn't sharp enough as well so what i've got now is i've got my ordinary foot on and i'm going to change it as well for my walking foot so i've just taken off my ordinary presser foot and as we can see that's smooth underneath so that will just slide along your fabrics which for the majority of your projects that you work on will be fine but if you're working on particularly bulky fabrics you might want to invest in a walking foot now a walking foot um, by its nature actually has these serrated edges underneath as well so they mimic the action of your walking um, your feed dogs here so the two sets of um, feet um, in interlace together if you like in order to pull the fabric through evenly so you don't get a drag on top and bottom so a walking foot is really really useful for very slippery fabrics and um, also for heavy duty fabrics like this or for light upholstery fabric as well and it just gives you that extra ability to um to grip so what i'm going to do now is this little lever here is what actually works the um the feed dogs there and that has to go over the top of your needle um your needle screw, is that the right name for it? Bit under here? I think that's the right name for it. And then you then screw that in place. So I've got the little lever over the top of my, oops, fingers don't want to work today. It's just fiddly getting that screw just sighted to start off with, isn't it? There we go. So I just tie it, tighten it up by hand to start off with. And then you'll need your screwdriver to just make sure that that actually is nice and tight so it doesn't wobble around while you're sewing. So if I just bob you down slightly, so that's the bar you need that's the bar that you tighten and tighten and loosen your needle with, and the little catch has just gone over the top of that needle bar. Just make sure you put your feet and your sewing, sewing um, your screwdriver away. I love these little um, 
Tupperware tops. It was from a takeaway actually, which is really useful to have and I've just labelled it up. So I do have several of those around my sewing studio just for putting things into. So that's what we've done. So we're all ready now. We have our jeans needle in, we've got our walking foot on our machine and we've got our mustard coloured thread in our machine. So what we're going to do now is, let's see if this will fit on over here, because we've taken the free arm off. Might just fit, where am I going to be lucky? No, I'm not. So what I'm going to have to do is put that back on again. Sometimes your cuff will fit over there and you can just sew it in a circle, but this one's too narrow. And if you're doing children's jackets, sometimes they can be too narrow too. So just turn your sleeve inside out. I'm going to start at this edge here and then and go along here and then I will do that little bit just there as well. So just fold your, your fabric out of the way. I'm going to start a little way in because it's so bulky. I'm going to start a little way in and then go back. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to get through both sides of the fabric. I'm not too bothered about the inside and how that looks. If you are, just make sure that this um, inside edge of, of your cuff is slightly further um, in towards your arm than the outside of the cuff, and then you're guaranteed to catch it. And then we're going to take our night, let's turn our speed down because we're working with a thicker fabric, so we don't want to go zooming at anything. And we're just going to just take a few stitches and then I'm just going to go backwards onto the corner. Again, my machine just starting to struggle slightly. So we can hand crank it if we need to, just one stitch at a time. Just into that edge just there. That's it. Just turn it round slightly. You have to be careful because of all the bulk of the walking foot. If it'll work. Yes, there we go. I'm going to take my needle and pin out as well. I we don't want to sew over our pins. And then I'm just going to just hand crank this because sometimes it can jump when you're going through stiff, stiff fabric. So I'm just going to go over a couple of the stitches that we did before. I'm going to leave it in. And I'm just going to go backwards again to where we were. I should be able to just sew that bit. We can. So let's just put that needle back in. And now for sewing across here, we're going to try and match the length of the stitches here, which I think will be about three. So just make sure this is all lying all nice and flat as you can. You might need to just give it a bit of help to start it off. There we go. Needle down as we know when we're sewing so that we can actually get some, so just um, get needle down so we know where we are. So just make sure that you've got that other cuff underneath and then we're just going to sew along the original line. You can just see it from the fading in the denim. Just be careful you don't prick yourself as I have just done. Get used to it, occupational hazard, don't you? But just be careful if you can. the next bit. If you need to just lift your presser foot up so you can get to your pins and then put it back down again. Hopefully you can see all of this. It's a little bit difficult for you isn't it? And I've not got a lot of room to work with so you're gonna have to trust me on on what I'm doing. Just see if I can change the camera angle for you. Hold on. Hopefully that might be a little bit easier if we can. So as we roll out the back, we're just going to roll it forward and we, all we need to do is make sure that the inch in front of the presser foot is nice and smooth. And as long as that's okay, then we can do enough. And we just keep rolling it forward. A couple more stitches till we take that pin out. There we go, let's take this pin out now. You can hand tack this if you wanted to first as well, just so you're not having to navigate around pins. I used to have a fear of injections until I started sewing and now I don't even blink. So again, just keep rolling it forward, making sure it's nice and smooth. Take the pins out as we go. Just making sure that we're catching the underside of the cuff. Press the foot down. Just 
keep adjusting as you go. And I can see we've got a bit poking out there. Where's my awl? So I can see that some of the fabric has actually come out, poked out, as I've been manipulating this. So yes, I would suggest that hand tacking it might save you some time and some some pain. Set that down. Just making sure we clear the button with our presser foot. Making sure that everything just stays nicely tucked in. This all is really useful when you're working on thicker fabrics like this, just for holding things in place. Then we're going to go to the edge. Just take it nice and steady because you're back onto the really thick fabric here. Just take that back a stitch. Not too far. And then I'm just going to twist again back down to here again. Do this edge. Now we're going to struggle because of the button, but let's see how far we get. I'm just going to hand crank it, I think. Wanting the stitching to join up if we can. Yes, we've got it. Okay, and then we can then put our needle in, and then we should be able to just reverse. Needle up. Let's take this out carefully and snip our threads. And yes, we have caught it all the way through. Just so take that thread off there. And there. And there we go. We have our cuff sewn on nice and neatly. We've got the little pleat in that we put in. Just a little thread there, but I think that's just a frayed one. And the button will still work. And it's lined up. And we know that this stitch in here isn't going to fray at all. We've got a much smaller placket than we had on the other side and when we start to unrip we, the next one we know that that's what we need to do so that's how we're going to do the other side so let me just get the other side done and then we'll come back to you. So there we go all finished two cuffs all nicely sewn a new length and as you can see they fit so much better now so I'm really pleased. So I hope that's given you the confidence to have a go at changing a jacket for yourself. Um, it also works with men's um, and ladies sleeve, long sleeve cuffs as well on shirts. So um, it's the exact same process, but the fabric's just a bit easier to work with because obviously it's a lot thinner. So hope that helps. Um, happy stitching everybody. Have a great day and thank you for watching.